The Green Mile is a 1999 American fantasy crime drama film written and directed by Frank Darabont and adapted from Stephen King's 1996 novel of the same name. The film stars Tom Hanks as Paul Edgecombe and Michael Clark Duncan as John Coffey, with supporting roles by David Morse, Bonnie Hunt, and James Cromwell. The film also features Dabs Greer in his final film, as the older Paul Edgecombe. The film, told in a flashback format, tells the story of Paul's life as a death row corrections officer during the U.S. Great Depression, and the supernatural events he witnessed there. The film received positive reviews from critics, and was nominated for four Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor for Michael Clark Duncan, Best Sound, and Best Screenplay based on material previously produced or published. Topic. Plot In a Louisiana assisted living home in 1999, Paul Edgecombe begins to cry while watching the 1930s film Top Hat. His companion Elaine becomes concerned, and Paul explains to her that the film reminded him of the events of 1935, which took place during the Great Depression when he was a prison officer, in charge of death row, what they refer to as the Green Mile. In 1935, Paul supervises officers Brutus Howell, Dean Stanton, Harry Terwilliger, and Percy Wetmore at Cold Mountain Penitentiary. Paul is suffering from a severe bladder infection and receives into his custody John Coffey, a physically imposing but mentally challenged and gentle black man. John had been sentenced to death after being convicted of raping and murdering two white girls. One of the other inmates is a Native American named Arlen Bitterbuck, who is charged with murder and is the first to be executed. Percy demonstrates a severe sadistic streak, but gets away with it because he is the governor's nephew. He is particularly abusive with inmate Edouard Delacroix, Del, he breaks Del's fingers with his baton, steps on a pet mouse named Mr. Jingles, which Del had adopted, repeatedly calls him by a gay slur, and ultimately sabotages his execution by deliberately not soaking the sponge used to conduct electricity to Del's head. As a result, Del suffers a longer and more painfully graphic death by catching fire and burning alive. John begins to demonstrate supernatural powers, he cures Paul's bladder infection, resurrects Mr. Jingles, and heals a dying Melinda Moore's, wife of the prison's chief warden, of a brain tumor. He later releases her affliction into Percy, who under its influence shoots dead another prisoner, mass murderer William Wild Bill Wharton. Wharton had been a troublemaker ever since his arrival. He assaulted the guards while being escorted into the block, made mischief on two occasions that later caused Paul to order him restrained in the block's padded cell, groped Percy, made a racist remark in John's presence, and revealed psychically to John that he in fact raped and murdered the two white girls. John was arrested for Wharton's crime as he had been at the scene unsuccessfully trying to resurrect the two white children with his powers. John then reveals the story psychically to Paul, who is also given a snippet of his supernatural energy. Meanwhile, Percy is committed to an insane asylum after entering a vegetative state. Paul discusses with John the possibility of an unlikely long-term escape, as he does not wish to execute what he perceives is a miracle of God. Although distraught over the notion of being executed while innocent, John tells Paul that he has been through enough psychical experience with humanity's cruelty. Mentioning that he had never seen a movie before, John watches Top Hat with the other guards as a last request. John is executed that night, he asks that the customary hood not be placed over his head, as he is afraid of the dark. Paul concludes his story by telling Elaine that John's was the last execution that he and Brutus supervised. Following Coffey's execution, they both took jobs in the juvenile system. Elaine realizes that, since he had a grown son in 1935, Paul must be much older than he looks. Paul reveals that he is, in fact, 108 years of age, he was 44 when John walked the Green Mile. Not only is he still alive, but so is Dell's mouse, Mr. Jingles. Paul continues to explain that although John never intended for it to happen, his curing of Paul has given him an extraordinary lifespan, causing him to outlive his family and friends, which he perceives is a punishment from God for executing John, and will also outlive Elaine. Paul later attends her funeral and muses that if John's power could make a normally short-lived mouse live for six decades as Mr. Jingles has, how much longer does he himself have left? Topic. Cast Topic. 
Topic: Production. Darabont adapted the novel into a screenplay in under eight weeks. The film was shot at Warner Hollywood Studios, West Hollywood, California, and on location in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Topic: Casting. Hanks and Darabont met at an Academy Award luncheon in 1994. Stephen King stated he envisioned Hanks in the role and was happy when Darabont mentioned his name. Morse had not heard about the script until he was offered the role. He stated he was in tears by the end of it. Darabont wanted Cromwell from the start, and after he read the script, Cromwell was moved and agreed. Duncan credited his casting to Bruce Willis, with whom he had worked on the film Armageddon one year earlier. According to Duncan, Willis introduced him to Darabont after hearing of the open call for John Coffey. Basketball player Shaquille O'Neal was considered for the role of John Coffey. Hanks was originally supposed to play elderly Paul Edgecombe as well, but the makeup tests did not make him look credible enough to be an elderly man. Because of this, Greer was hired to play the older Edgecombe. <laughs> Topic. Soundtrack The official film soundtrack, music from the motion picture The Green Mile, was released on December 19, 1999 by Warner Brothers. It contains 37 tracks, primarily instrumental tracks from the film score by Thomas Newman. It also contains four vocal tracks, Cheek to Cheek, by Fred Astaire, I Can't Give You Anything But Love, Baby, by Billie Holiday, Did You Ever See a Dream Walking, by Gene Austin, and Charmaine, by Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadians. Topic Reception. Topic Critical Response. Review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes gives the film an approval rating of 79% based on 132 reviews, with an average rating of 6.9,10. The critical consensus states, Though the green mile is long, critics say it's an absorbing, emotionally powerful experience. The film also has a score of 61 out of 100 on Metacritic based on 36 critics indicating, generally favorable reviews. Roger Ebert gave the film three and a half stars out of four, writing, The film is a shade over three hours long. I appreciated the extra time, which allows us to feel the passage of prison months and years. Forbes commentator Dawn Mendez referred to the character of John Coffey as a magic Negro figure, a term describing a stereotypical fictional black person depicted in a fictional work as a saintly, non-threatening person whose purpose in life is to solve a problem for or otherwise further the happiness of a white person. Topic awards and honors 2000 Academy Awards nominated, Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role, Michael Clark Duncan nominated, Best Picture, David Valdez, Frank Darabont nominated, Best Sound, Robert J. Litt, Elliot Tyson, Michael Herbick and Willie D. Burton nominated, Best Screenplay based on material previously produced or published, Frank Darabont 2000 Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy and Horror Films won, Best Supporting Actor, Michael Clark Duncan won, Best Supporting Actor Patricia Clarkson won, Best Action, Adventure, Thriller Film nominated, Best Director, Frank Darabont nominated, Best Music, Thomas Newman 2000 Broadcast Music Incorporated Film and TV Awards won, Film Music Award, Thomas Newman 2000 Black Reel Awards won, Theatrical, Best Supporting Actor, Michael Clark Duncan 2000 Blockbuster Entertainment Awards won, Favorite Actor, Drama, Tom Hanks nominated, Favorite Supporting Actor, Drama, Michael Clark Duncan nominated, Favorite Supporting Actress, Drama, Bonnie Hunt 2000 Bram Stoker Awards nominated, Best Screenplay, Frank Darabont 2000 Broadcast Film Chittix Association Awards won, Best Screenplay, Adaptation, Frank Darabont won, Best Supporting Actor, Michael Clark Duncan nominated, Best Film 1999 Chicago Film Critics Association Awards nominated, 
Best Supporting Actor, Michael Clark Duncan nominated, Most Promising Actor, Michael Clark Duncan 2000 Directors Guild of America nominated, Outstanding Directorial Achievement in Motion Pictures, Frank Darabont 2000 Golden Globe Awards nominated, Best Supporting Actor, Motion Picture, Michael Clark Duncan 2000 NAACP Image Awards nominated, Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture, Michael Clark Duncan 2000 MTV Movie Awards nominated, Best Breakthrough Male Performance Michael Clark Duncan 2000 Motion Picture Sound Editors Golden Reel Awards nominated Best Sound Editing Dialogue and ADR Mark A Mangini Julia Evershade nominated Best Sound Editing Effects and Foley Mark A Mangini Aaron Glasscock Howell Gibbons David E Stone Solange S Schwal 2000 People's Choice Awards 1 Favorite All Around Motion Picture 1. Favorite Dramatic Motion Picture 2001 Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America Nebula Award Nominated, Best Script, Frank Darabont 2000 Screen Actors Guild Awards Nominated, Outstanding Performance by a Cast Nominated, Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Supporting Role, Michael Clark Duncan 4th Golden Satellite Awards Nominated Satellite Award for Best Supporting Actor, Motion Picture Doug Hutchison